Hello everyone and welcome to this fourth episode. In today's episode we're gonna do something a bit more nuanced. It's gonna be using three different softwares for achieving this polarization process. It's gonna be something that is gonna be used AI and normal manual processes, machine learning, but it's gonna be assisted by the operator that is us. This is not a replacement for a complete operation, but this is a use case for using the new machine learning algorithms that we have available on Photoshop now and that we had available in Nuke for a couple of years. So the idea is we have this trailer. This is a 1960 trailer for the movie The Village of the Damned. The original movie was shot in black and white and there was a remake by John Carpenter in the 90s, but this is the original one. So yeah, this is a normal trailer. The scan it was available on archive.org. I think it was a bit compressed, but it seems okay. Something that I don't really like is that, well, there is not like heavy compression, but it's not the highest quality available that you can find, but it's working. So the idea here is that let's say that we want to colorize it. What could we do? We're going to pick three shots. First one is going to be this one. You may think that this is a bit harder. Yeah, it is because there is like the fire, the lighting is changing in the face of the actor. There is a lot of actors. And it's going to be a bit more challenging to colorize it, especially if you were doing a manual process. Second one is going to be the easiest one. The actors are just there. It's, the movement is minimal. I mean, you can see the movement there, but it's minimal. And we have seen kind of a splice movement at the beginning, but it's okay. The most moving you can see is on the girl on the right, which is doing some kind of gesture with her mouth, but it's okay. The last one that we're gonna use is this one. This is an aerial shot of an airplane moving above a town. This is the most complex shot that we can find for this use case. So let's get to it. First thing that we're gonna do is a cleanup. This is not a difficult subject. I did some small the flickering here. I had to use a global mode because the compression and the state of this particular trailer didn't allow me to use the local mode. So I had to use global mode. But it's working okay. DBO dry clean. I went a bit farther than I'm normally used to, but it's working okay. And we don't have a lot of movement here, and we haven't lost a lot of features. You can check if you want a manual process to check if we have lost something might be needed here. Finally, some clarity. I like grain, I don't have any problem with grain, but in this particular trailer, we have grain mixed with the compression, so we need to clean the compression. After that, we cool. Add some grain back, just an RGBR grain, that could be okay, but we are not gonna deal with that at this moment. It's gonna be simple. We just need to clean our plate. That's something that VFX people do a lot. Cleaning the plate, preparing the plate so it can be used for VFX. Let's see the result. Should be fairly easy to render this because it's a simple 1080p. Let's do a comparison with the original. I think Dual is gonna be a better. As I told you, this is nothing fancy. It's just small speckles of dust here and there and the flicker and the compression and the grain gone. The next step is gonna be, we're gonna render this as individual EXR files. We can do this in PNG, TIFF or DPX, whatever format that you want, but I prefer doing EXR because it's the standard of VFX production for interchanging between vendors or interchanging between the, your own colleagues in a professional environment, either with lossless compression or lucid compression. EXR works better than PNG or whatever. Okay, so now we've finished with this particular part we have the, the output so now let's go to photoshop so what we're going to do in photoshop you need, just need to bring the exr that we have created so my particular exr is located here so we're going to open this and there is a dialogue that's going to pop up about open exr with options we're going to just open the alpha channels and transparency we are just working with rgb color channels we don't need to mess with transparency at the moment so we have the subject here something that you may have noticed is that color management in photoshop is quite weird Open EXR is supported, but color management, especially using Open Color IO, is going to be a bit harder. At this moment, we are not going to mess with any type of color management settings. Maybe in the future, we're going to do a full roundup restoration workflow, let's say from Resolve to Phoenix, to Photoshop to whatever, so we can do a whole ACES workflow, even in Nuke. But at the moment, we are not going to mess with color management because this bit is going to be like two hours long. Let's just work with whatever Photoshop has interpreted for the linear image in the EXR. Yeah, we just have the complete image here. We don't have to do anything particular. I just like to convert this to a smart object and once i have it as a smart object i'm just going to use the new neural filters from photoshop we have these different options here in neural filters the one that we are most interested in is going to be this colorized feature here you just need to download it 
it's gonna process and it's gonna give us an automatic result so from the get-go i think we have achieved mostly what we wanted there is a way to fix some of the features here if you know this movie these kids should have white hair i mean we can deal with this immediately right now we just need to you can see it here there is a manually colored image right we just need to set the focal point where we want to change a particular color so let's set up here the girl's hair okay it's gonna be kind of a silvery one white something like that let's wait for it to load yeah okay it's doing a okay result we just need to find another places for it to redo that okay here as well but remember we don't want to mess with the color of the face so we may need to move this it's kind of doing what we wanted but i think this would be better to do with a selection in photoshop not here i'm gonna cancel this and i'm gonna use this output that we want because it's doing quite a good job we have some settings here for saturation it's like a correction the footage but it's not gonna change it's gonna be the same as using a color filter in lightroom or whatever so we're not gonna mess with this color artifacts in this particular case are something like this that you see on this girl's lip is going out of bounds that we may want to control problem is we are dealing with another issue as we are losing some type of color differentiation between the background and the foreground if we want to correct this we can do this in photoshop normal way cloning painting stamping whatever now that we have the png with the color and the original with the black and white we just need to go to nuke here in nuke we're going to use a process that's called copycat we have two options here i'm going to show you both options everything is loaded here previously loaded you know this is a cooking show everything should be ready to go from the beginning and we're going to use the standard new colors match we're not going to use open color io if you notice i'm using relative pads i believe that when you're working in nuke especially if we are working with different machines in a centralized storage environment it's better to use relative pads that way you can open a project in nuke in different machines without reconnecting everything that takes a lot of time especially if your project is quite big this is a small project i don't care i could reconnect everything manually but it wastes a lot of time so it's not a good practice and also something that's really good for me is that i usually work with a lot of mac os and, and windows machines so i can jump back and forward between them and since the pads are relative nuke doesn't care if you have mac os pads or windows pads or linux pads or whatever these are the three images that i created in photoshop they are mostly similar this one has a red tint on the girl's neck i don't really care because it's not gonna be affecting all that much but like i told you if you were doing this for a complete job you could obviously fix this beforehand in photoshop and here we have the three black and white pictures the original ones three one two three one two three one two. okay for all intents and purposes i'm using the nuke x non-commercial version the, the major limitation that the nuke non-commercial version has is that it can only render at full hd resolution that's 1920 by 1080p if you have the nuke in the license that could render at uhd so that could work better for all restoration purposes but in this particular case it's gonna be working okay and the first node that we're gonna use is called match grade we only need to render three frames at the moment we don't want to render all those frames match grade is gonna try to extract the colors from a source and to a target so it's gonna be the source here and the target here the target is gonna be the colorized picture and the source is gonna be the black and white picture yeah you can see it here it's quite noticeable so we have some options here i always like to use a linear to lock node before doing the match grade because in nuke you have to be aware of those values that are above one or under zero that can have a lot of issues when you're working with these color operations a lot of operations need you to cut the upper limits and the lower limits of the image a good practice is to have a linear to lock operation or a lock to linear operation depending on the circumstance for sharpening and in this particular case for doing the match grade the thing is here we're going to create a 3d lot the pre is going to be logarithmic because we are doing a linear to lock operation here the last resolution is going to be the biggest one that's going to be 64 and we just need to analyze these frames it's going to be quite fast and the result is going to be here and the result seems duotone at least we have a difference between the clothes and the faces but this is not what we want so match grade is not going to cut it the next thing that we're going to use is something that's called copycat copycat was introduced i believe in 2020 in the 13 version of nuke if i recall correctly the idea behind copycat is doing some machine learning using some set of images 
That set of images are used for training the algorithm and the algorithm creates an interference and that interference can be used to do whatever you want. Maybe to improve the resolution of an image, maybe to create a mat, to expand the mat, to colorize an image, to do whatever. You just need to get the input and the output. The input is going to be your original image, let's say our black and white image and the ground truth is going to be whatever we want to achieve. For the best results, the images need to have the same resolution. Even if one is lower resolution and you want to upgrade it, for this particular process, we need them to be the same size because we need the pixels to be in the same place. And doesn't matter if the pixels have detail or not, or there are blocky messes, whatever. We just need all the pieces to be in the same place. In this particular case, we don't care because the only difference between the original and the colorized picture is the color. Something that I tried before is using a telecine to improve the clarity of a 16mm film that was heavily damaged. They need to be kind of in the same place, even if you have to put one over the other and try to match them manually for this to work properly. So we have our input, our ground truth, and we just need to start doing the training. The training needs to have a specific folder. So we're going to create a new folder called training2 and in this folder we're going to store all the training. I'm also using relative paths here and just need to replace this with a dot and that should be it. The main thing that we need to be aware of when you are creating this training data sets is the number of epochs that's going to be the number of repetitions that the algorithm is going to use for creating the interference. In this particular shot, since the movement is really minimal, we don't need more than the base 10,000. You can even work with a bit less if you want, but we don't need more than the base 10,000. Let's start the training here. As you can see, I have an NVIDIA RTX GPU in this machine. It works better with RTX and NVIDIA at the moment. Apple Silicon is quite slow. So let's start the training here. When I start the training, these blocks on the left start to appear and you can see it here. They have the input, the ground truth, and the output. The algorithm is gonna take the input, it's gonna try to compare it to the ground truth, and it's gonna create an output from that difference, trying to improve every time. So we can see we have a neat option here to see the progress. The closer it gets to zero in this chart, the closer we are gonna get a good result. At the moment, the scale is linear. It's not completely showing everything, so we're gonna change to log. And in log, we have a better representation of the values that we are working. After four minutes or so, we might get a close to zero or zero output. So let's cancel this because I already have this done. So let's say we have finished doing the training. Everything is going to come back here and we have three options. Besides start training again, we can resume the training. If we want, we can increase the number of epochs. If the result that we were seeing here or in the chart doesn't align with what we want, we can increase this maybe to 20,000, 30,000, whatever you need. And we have the last option is gonna to be to create an interference. So we need to create this interference here. With the interference created, we just need to bring the original complete shot back. So I'm gonna bring the original shot here. So this is, I believe it's like a hundred or so frames. I'm gonna change the project settings to reflect this. So this is the original file. Yeah, the one that we cleaned and then we load the interference here and every frame should now have the color that we have set. Let's do this on the other cases. Let's see what we can achieve. Okay, let's open the other ones. So this was a harder shot because we have these issues here. We have the flickering lights of the torches that people were carrying. Photoshop did an okay job. Problem is that we may need to increase the number of epochs or to increase the number of frames because the final output, even after the 20,000 epochs training that I did here, is not there yet. I will believe it's not there yet. You can see it, the fire at the moment is looking a bit more bluish. So we may need to correct this in Photoshop. We need to correctly choose some frames that had a lot of the fire in there and then correctly apply the color to the fire. Then we have this issue here on the men's coat on the right that sometimes loses color because I believe this is a consequence of the fire not being correctly colored. But this can be fixed on Photoshop and maybe having two extra frames in the training could also be beneficial. And the last one that I'm gonna show you is the hardest of them all is the airplane shot. This took a lot of manual cleanup, manual fixes on Photoshop because the colors were not correctly placed. So I had to choose a lot of the places manually in order for them to be colored correctly. 
I believe this particular training is gonna take about 40,000 or so in order to complete. Let's do it here, let's do it now. And I'll come back once it's finished. After close of half an hour, training has finally finished. It was 40,000 epochs what I end up using. I believe the result was okay. At least what I was seeing here on the left was okay. Check the interference here on the clean output. We have the clean output here. If the is in order, let's see if the results are what we expected. And we believe we have a winner. For the most part, let's wait for it to load completely. These are probably the limits of the algorithm. It's kind of working. One thing that I could make here to improve this is to maybe when we have this kind of greenish tint, we need to get another Photoshop frame here. And then we may need to trade this particular frame. There is a lot of frames that need and a specific training here as well here a lot of places that could need this particular training but for the most part it's working okay you can see that with a little more of effort even this particularly hard shot could be improved and this is like the hardest of them all because the camera is in motion the subject is in motion everything is in motion this was my mistake if i had correctly painted this part we wouldn't have this shift of color so that's basically it for today i hope this is helpful ai is not the end of us all it's just another tool that we need to master in order for us to make most of it people like to talk about the end of all manual work ai is not the end of all manual work it's just a tool be safe and see you next time